on the basis of the newly revised GFA statutes. We would like to seize this opportunity to commend the Normalization Committee for the journey achieved so far under extremely difficult and challenging circumstances. Today's Congress marks an important milestone in the Normalization Committee's mandate insofar as new FIFA-conform GFA statutes and the draft GFA electoral code are submitted to you, the delegates of the GFA, for adoption. In fact, the timely holding of elections of a new GFA Executive Committee, which is the last task uh, of the Normalization Committee's mandate, depends on the adoption of these statutes and of the Electoral Code. The draft statutes on today's agenda are the fruit of a long, comprehensive consultation process between the Normalization Committee and FIFA. They are the result of numerous exchanges and discussions, both physically when we met in Paris and on numerous occasions um, over, over the phone, and actually also yesterday night until uh, the very late hours uh, at uh, Dr. Amoa's house. We also understand that the Normalization Committee has held further meetings and consultations with the members of GFA during the last weeks on the draft statutes and, on, and that on that occasion various comments and observations were submitted by you, the members of the GFA. These comments and observations were further analyzed by the Normalization Committee in collaboration with FIFA and the large majority of them have been eventually incorporated in the draft statutes. All these changes, I understand, will be presented to you by the uh, Normalization Committee shortly. We can now confirm that the draft statutes that will be presented to you by the Normalization Committee meet the requirements of FIFA. Consequently, their adoption by the Congress will pave the way for the timely holding of the elective Congress to put, in, to put in place a new GFA Executive Committee and hence end the Normalization Committee's mandate. However, should the GFA Congress decide today not to approve the new draft GFA statutes or should it decide to make substantial changes to the current draft which will require a further time-consuming assessment by the relevant departments within FIFA, with obviously an unknown outcome, this would put on hold the holding of the elective Congress. Indeed, the proposed changes might, after review, ultimately be rejected by FIFA. So the ball is in your feet today. You hold the keys to move the GFA into the right direction with the adoption of the proposed statutes. May I continue? May I continue, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, FIFA's wish is to have Ghana football back in the news for the right reasons. Because football is being developed at all levels and for both genders, because Ghanaian clubs and national teams succeed, because the administration of football is exemplary, and not, as in the past, because of governance problems, misadministration, and ethical and disciplinary misconduct. In this context, we would also like to commend the Normalization Committee for finally having nominated prosecutors to investigate all allegations of ethical and disciplinary misconduct and eventually submit charges to the relevant GFA judicial bodies. The message should be clear to everyone. There is no place in football for unethical behavior. It is therefore also important that the joint FIFA, CAF, GFA and Government of Ghana task force continues to carry out its mandate to put in place the necessary safeguarding mechanisms to, er to eradicate corruption in Ghanaian football. Once again, thank you very much for having us as observers at today's extraordinary Congress and we wish you very successful deliberations. Thank you.